Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. More PowerShell magic today from Rob. Rob is looking today at how to easily identify domain administrators. Now, first of all, it is important to distinguish between local administrators and domain administrators. Rob here is looking for domain administrators. Now, you may have uh, quite a few of local administrators depending on how easy you go on, for example, developers or such that tend to like to have local administrator rights for their systems. But domain administrators with the power to administer the entire organization, well, that should be highly restricted and controlled. With uh, Rob's PowerShell script, you get a list of all the administrators and also their group memberships. Real nice use of PowerShell and of course it is sort of as Rob describes, really nice to clean up some of the mistakes that you may have made over the years in assigning these roles. Mac security expert Patrick Wardle uh, took a closer look at some recent additions to Apple's X-Protect. This is Apple's antivirus solution that's sort of built into OS X and Mac OS. And well, it's uh, now 10 years old about. It's uh, fairly simple and straightforward. As an average user, you never really know it exists and it does utilize the Yara language for its signatures. So they're pretty easy to read. Now, Patrick discovered that Apple last week added signatures for some Windows malware, interestingly. Now, a lot of uh, non-Apple OS X anti-malware does include signatures for Windows malware, like the Sophos and the like. And the reason is usually that the OS X systems interact a lot with Windows systems. And by identifying malware on the OS X system, well, uh, you then not don't act sort of as a carrier as you are then interacting with the Windows systems and possibly infecting it if the Windows system has access to a file stored on the OS X or Mac OS system. But XProtect so far only included a list that was limited to Mac OS malware. The reason, according to Patrick, that Apple decided to add these particular Windows executables to the list is that uh, these malware specimens were actually distributed uh, to Macs via the Mono.NET framework. Mono is an open source implementation of .NET, also works in Linux, so C Sharp code written for Windows, you can actually then execute on OS X or on Linux. Now, there are only two signatures so far that Apple released last week. Uh, they appear to be targeting adware. Mac malware written in C Sharp uh, using Mono was actually first spotted back in February. And uh, one issue there was that Gatekeeper, that's the system on Mac OS that checks for valid signatures and XProtect, that antivirus uh, component, neither one of them really applied to these Windows binaries. And uh, by doing so, well, uh, this malware sort of slipped underneath uh, these protection mechanisms. The problem with Gatekeeper, of course, is that as far as Gatekeeper is concerned, uh, this C Sharp Windows binary, well, it's not an executable, so it's not checking it uh, for uh, any digital signatures, uh, only the mono library, which of course, you no. Know, is allowed that's not malicious it's just reading the file and then interpreting it as far as gatekeeper is concerned so that's why gatekeeper really never applied its rules to it and thousands of Android users apparently download an application called Wi-Fi Finder that will display nearby Wi-Fi networks to find uh, open or shared hotspots. The application has an interesting feature that allows you to share passwords to access particular hotspots and to then, of course, allow users to look it up and to get access to that network. 
Now, that idea isn't new and isn't unique to Wi-Fi Finder. Windows, for example, is experimenting with a feature that would make that easy. But uh, Windows, if you ever looked at how it does it, it actually goes through quite some hoops uh, to do that somewhat securely. In the case of a Wi-Fi Finder, well, uh, not so much. The problem was that a security researcher, Sanyam Yain, uh, found an exposed DigitalOcean server that allowed unauthenticated access to all passwords collected by all users using Wi-Fi Finder. The list includes the Wi-Fi network, uh, the BSS ID, the geographic location, and then of course, uh, the Wi-Fi password itself. The server has been taken offline by DigitalOcean and looks like Wi-Fi Finder itself has also been removed from the Google Play Store. And if there is a service that allows users to store files, well, it will be abused and it will be used to store malicious files as well. GitHub is in the news again for storing phishing kits in this case. Now, phishing kits, of course, are not easy sort of to detect automatically uh, because it is just HTML code and then maybe some backend uh, code or so to collect the data. What sort of makes it particularly interesting with GitHub is that GitHub also can surf these HTML pages. And then if you have some code within these pages that sends the data off to a third party. Well, uh, then all the user downloads is a GitHub page, which of course is usually not considered malicious. And in case you missed our top current threats talk at RSA, Alan, Ed, and Heather and I uh, will deliver a webinar version of the talk later on Thursday. I will add the URL for the talk to the show notes. Uh, it will start uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. And just like the real talk, we'll leave plenty of time for questions. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.